Okay, uh, we've been sent a case here uh, to evaluate uh, tooth number 10. Uh, looks like the tooth is going to, it's an immediate placement where the tooth is going to come out. Um, and we're making the assumption that the tooth is going to come out. There's either a fracture or something else going along in the post here. Uh, so uh, let's take a closer look. Uh, these anterior areas, uh, these, these are where the minor changes make a big difference in really understanding how to use our software and understanding the processes of planning will really make a tremendous difference. So the first thing we'll look at, and, and it's very important uh, for us to look at here, is I want to point out how nicely uh, this this is done. Now, uh, many of us, uh, many people are trained that it doesn't matter how you design the tooth when there's an existing tooth there, and I, I couldn't disagree more. How I want to plan the tooth and how I encourage us to plan the tooth is based on putting the tooth on the facial here and being able to draw the gingival margin exactly where it needs to be. And the reason we want to do this is we want to be able to transfer this information to the software so we can use that to help us plan the implant a bit better. So let's take a closer look at the implant plan. And um, here we go. And let's take a closer look at tooth number 10. So um, what I've done here is I've duplicated this so we can make a comparison. And um, my, here are my first thoughts, okay? My first thoughts are uh, this is a very well-placed implant, okay? So uh, what I'm going to look at is how, how, and how can we make it better or is it possible to make it better, okay? And how would I define better? To me, I would define better as maybe having the implant to be a hair more... Um, centered between the roots, because if we look at it right here, this is tooth number 11, this is tooth number 9. Um, we're definitely closer to number 11 than we are to number 9, so I have more room there. Uh, we're following the root, okay, um, so I'm going to lose all my stability in this particular area right here, but we have enough stability with this active implant here on the apical. Uh, the other thing I'm looking at is my sleeve looks to be contacting tooth number 11 here compared to tooth number 9 right here. So we definitely have room to go there. The other reason I want to center this is uh, I definitely want to give ourselves the best chance of maintaining this interproximal bone right here. Because if we lose this interproximal bone, we are going to lose our papillas. So my first movement in this particular case is going to be... Um, I want to move this entire implant to the mesial, just like so. Okay. Now that little bit of movement, let me undo that here. Okay, that movement from here to there will now give me greater room right here to maintain that bone, yet still have enough room right here to maintain that bone. The other thing that that movement will allow me to do here is it'll also start engaging some of this bone right here for my stability, okay? So th there are two benefits uh, to that as well. Now, the next thing that's gonna happen is we've moved this too close to number nine. So we're going to tilt this and center it in the tooth, just like so. So now, we have the implant a little more centered. Again, these are minor changes, you know, and, and in fact, I could probably say that we could center this a bit more. Let's go here, okay? And then each time we do that, let's tilt a little bit, and this time I'm going to tilt from the apex of the implant, just like so, okay? Now, now we've really made a, a, a really nice difference in our implant plan. One, because we are more. We have more room here for maintaining interproximal bone, which is very important. And now, if we draw the outline of our tooth, just like so, now look how much of my thread, all of this thread, right here, is in new fresh bone. So now we have a significant portion of this implant uh, with it being aggressive is going to be able to engage in that bone. So this is a tremendous benefit to us by moving this implant. Just that little bit uh, can make a tremendous difference. 
So that kind of <clears throat> is the main thing I, I, that I was noticing with the plan. So the second thing I, I would like to take a look at is um, how can we try to make this a screw retain restoration? Because right now <clears throat> our access hole is going to come out through the incisor ledge, through the buckle a little bit. Uh, not a big deal, okay? It just means that we're going to need to do a custom abutment and crown here, uh, which as Cerec owners, we can do that. But what I'm more interested in looking at is can I make this a screw retained restoration? So let me go ahead and clip along the active slice here so I can look at it in this view right here. And now let's look. So really to make this a screw retained restoration, I need to tilt this back probably about maybe 10 degrees or so. So where, how can I do that? And I can bodily move it to the lingual or I can tilt it, um, but we have to take a closer look. Uh, my initial thought is that it's probably not possible uh, based on given this. Uh, one thing I do not like here or I would like to change is I do believe that we're engaging in the buckle plate here. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Um, it can be done, but I would prefer to just cheat that to the lingual a little bit, okay? Now, when I did that, that should also help a little bit in terms of getting this through the, uh, through the access area, but it's not enough. So I would tell you that we're not going to be able to make this screw retain without doing something like this and then having to come in and graft this area. So let's try to avoid that if possible, because when we graft, we have to flap and then we bring in uh, papilla issues and, and a different level of surgical skill uh, that many of us may not be ready for. So, uh, you know, th this is my overall impression, uh, a very well done plan. Uh, the only other thing I will say here is that I would like us to undersize this osteotomy, okay? And in this particular case, what I would like to do is I'm going to plan, uh, sorry, cancel. Let me plan another implant of the same size directly on this spot here, okay? There, close enough, okay? So now, what I would like to do, is, there we go, so it's, I'm just trying to be perfect. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you how I would drill this. In this extraction site, with this particular implant, what I would actually drill is I would probably only drill my 2.0 drill, okay? And my guess would be that with the 2.0 drill, and this particular implant being end cutting, aggressive, condensing, expanding implant, this 2.0 drill will leave me all of this bone. And as we tap this implant into place, the implant itself will not cut the bone, but actually condense and expand the bone. And then I would graft material in the socket itself after I place the implant up to the gingival margin. So hopefully this was helpful um, and I appreciate uh, sending in cases.